Okay, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. I know there's been quite a few requests for this video. So this is my predictions for the IGCC Paper 2 0580, and this is happening on the 17th of October, 2022. So there's a couple of changes from the last time I've done prediction videos, and hopefully it will help you really get that extra revision in for the exams. So first of all, I've got a new page here called Trending. So what I've done is I've gone through the new May-June exams 2022, try and get a feeling of what's going on with the papers, how they're changing. And this is my analysis here. So the first thing to notice is sequences and nth terms specifically have become much more popular. So gone from a six to a whopping 11 out of 13 papers. So that's really, really high. And in fact, I'm going to go through right at the end, so do stay tuned until the end of the video, a really tricky nth term problem that quite a few students asked about after the June exams. Uh, similarity, now on its own, it's now up to 9 out of 13, which is a lot. So be aware if you're not sure what similarity is, please do check that out. Now, trig equations has always been around the paper, so an often topic, but now, as you can see, it's gone from 7 to 9. So that's certainly something to revise. I'm going to go through that in a bit more detail later. Interior angles, they had a whopping load of questions on 2021 papers, um, but now on 2022, not so much. And bearings, there was a couple of bearings questions at the start of these June 2022 papers. So just be aware, be able to work out a bearing and working backwards as well. Right, let's get started on the main predictions. So the first part is a new topic that I've added here, 17, 13 papers, and this is HCF and LCM. So highest common factor and lowest common multiple. Now, generally they are at the start of the paper still. So using a factor tree or work out the HCF of two numbers. However, as you see the question here, question 15, this is from a 2022 paper, um, they can be a bit more complicated and use algebraic expressions. Now, when I say algebraic expressions here, what do I mean? Well, when they put some A cubes and B squared and things like this, and we need to find out the highest common factor with numbers, but also with letters as well. So make sure you do revise it, it's coming up sometimes. Venn diagrams is a staple on papers two and four. This is similar to my prediction from before. Know your set notation. So I put a couple of different questions here. So notice you need to be able to interpret this particular notation down here. So if you're not sure about the N and the U, then make sure you do revise that. Again, seven and 13 papers. But as I say here, it's going to appear on either paper two or paper four. That also applies to probability too. As you can see, that hasn't really changed much from last year, but more often on paper four, but can come up occasionally on paper two. Here's a sort of typical sample question on that as well. If you want more revision with probability, then do check out the video above where I go into much more detail on what kind of probability questions can appear. Circle theorems, always a popular topic, very similar to the previous two topics where it can appear pretty much equally on papers two and four. And here's a new example question for you to have a look at. Again, I've done an in-depth um, video on circle theorems. So again, check that out above. Upper and lower bounds. Again, one of these integrated into other topics. I thought this wouldn't make my list, but it just sneaks in at seven in 13 papers. Um, it can be standalone questions like this, generally towards the end of the paper, but they can also be integrated into other questions too. Variation and proportion. So this is now in. I've put this as often. So notice I've gone now into often where it's not it's kind of almost certain, but it's not sometimes either. It's somewhere in between. And generally these questions are generally badly done. This is why I have done a all of video for this as well. Again, you can also check that out above too. But you can see they'll try and trick you with words like inversely to the square of, put this in brackets, things like this. So do check out that video. I'll go through that in a lot of detail. Trigonometric equations. Again, this is more and more often on the paper. Definitely if you're aiming for the AA star grades, you really need to know how to do this. It's definitely one of the harder topics. A sample question here in front of you. Again, I've done an all of video on this topic too, and you can check that out above. 
Calculator skills, now I didn't really mention this in my previous prediction video, but I think it is worth mentioning. So this is usually towards the start of the paper, and it's just checking, can you use the fraction button on your calculator? Can you use the squared button? Can you use the square root button, etc.? And also get some testing of rounding in there as well. So that comes up, again, often. Uh, make sure you can just use your uh, scientific calculator. And this has dropped down. This was one of my almost certain topics, and it's now dropped down into often. So that's interesting. Maybe it's appearing more on paper four when I do my paper four prediction. Um, but as you can see, it's still a reasonable often topic. So you do need to revise this carefully, generally towards the end of the paper, and generally quite tricky, like, like working with pyramids, for example, or triangular prisms. So you can really test your knowledge of Pythagoras and trig in a 3D context. Sequences has now gone into my almost certain category, and this is a topic you really need to get familiar with. Again, I've done an all of video on this because I know how important it is to you as well. And again, this can vary. It can ask you for an nth term. They can work out the next term in the sequence, and you'll see a question right at the end of this video, which again is another twist on the same idea. Speed distance time is a staple on paper two. Again, it can be a simple speed distance time calculation. Um, I'm seeing more and more often now they use a either speed time graph or distance time graph. So please be aware if it's speed time graph or distance time graph, that changes it quite a bit. And the calculations that go with that, again, almost certain. And if it doesn't appear on paper two, it's got a good chance of appearing on paper four. Coordinate geometry, which to be quite honest, I haven't seen so much in the 2022 papers, but it still comes up if I take all the papers I've looked at. So that's the 2022 papers, the all the 20, 2021 papers, and then November 2020. So these are really up to date, but just notice 2022, not so frequent. But of course, this is a standard topic you need to know really, really well. Vectors has increased by one, if I remember rightly, so up to 10 now in 13 papers. And I've added an extra question here. Um, from the 2022 paper to show you what they're kind of asking, particularly the vector algebra here. So this is a question from one of the 20, 2022 papers. Well, you can see they've just changed it slightly. So they've put the two vectors in, I've told you what OD is, and you have to work out the ratio of two sides, which is a little bit different to probably what you've practiced. So just be familiar with that. I've done all of our GCSE vectors video too. And I'll pop that above as well. Statistics, it's always going to come up on the 0580 course. It's such a huge topic. Um, in the past, I've always talked about the stem and leaf diagrams coming up quite often and box plots. One thing they sneaked into one of the paper twos from 2022 is a question like this. So this is question two, and they ask you to work out the sector angle for the red cars. So this is one of the ways they can test you on pie charts specifically. It's not yet to actually draw one, it usually takes too much time in the exam, but they can certainly test you. How do you work out the angles to put into a pie chart? So just make sure you revise the main statistical topics. You know, they can sneak in the question in there at the beginning. Solving equations, again, this is quite a broad topic. Again, it could be linear, simultaneous, quadratics. Um, I've noticed some worded equation solving problems creeping into the papers as well, to be familiar. But this is here, for example, a very standard question. And you need to be able to get these questions consistently correct. If you're aiming for that grade B or grade C, these are the kind of questions you need to have in the bag. Percentage calculations, again, always comes up every year, hasn't changed with the 2022 papers. Again, this can vary. I've taken, again, a 2022 uh, paper question, which, again, is a slight change on the usual kind of question they ask you. So in this case, they're looking to work out the R in the compound interest, so kind of working backwards through the problem. So just be familiar that these problems can vary widely. That's really important to realize. Indices, again, this is a topic that was always coming up, and 2022 papers are not a change either. So you see questions. It can also be easy, it can be medium, it can be hard, they can vary quite a bit. I put some fairly straightforward questions here, but just be aware 15 and 13 papers, you have to know how to work with indices. 
And the fractions non-calculator question, again, this is pretty standard on all my prediction videos. You can, you can check those out. Um, but this is where they say, without a calculator, do some fraction calculation. And you simply need to know this and how to do this uh, because it comes up very often. Uh, recurring decimals to fractions, uh, not so often 2022 papers. But again, this guy of fraction question you need to have in the bag as well. Uh, air in volume of 2D, 3D shapes, again, popular as always. Um, notice similarity is one thing I did want to mention here. Uh, on its own, if you just take that subtopic of this topic here, on its own, it's 9 out of 13 papers. So I haven't divided that up into a separate slide here, but just be aware of that. Again, I've taken a 2022 um, paper question towards the end. So you can see they can really try and make it tricky here. In this case, you need to work out the slant height of the cone. So using both formulae for a cone and a sphere or a hemisphere, and then working backwards to find the slant length with a bit of Pythagoras. Factorizing, again, always a popular topic. Um, it was 19 in 13 papers last year, although this was expanding and factorizing I included. Whereas here, I've just focused on factorizing specifically. But as you can see, it's the majority of questions here, 14 in 13 papers. It can come in a variety of forms. Sometimes I'll just give you an expression to factorize. At the harder end, they'll do something like this, which essentially is an algebraic fraction that you need to simplify. So if you want to get the better marks, the AA stars, you need to be able to do a question like this consistently well. Okay, and on to my bonus question, which was a question that many mentioned about the paper two after the May-June exams. I thought I'd go through it with you here, best on sequences. So the nth term of a sequence is this quadratic, a n squared plus b n minus four. The first term is three, and the second term is two. Find the value of a and the value of b. So the way we do this is the first term, well, that's gonna be when n is equal to one, first term. And the second term will be when n is equal to 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute, first of all, n is 1 into my expression over here and make that equal to minus 3 because that's my first term. So wherever I see an n, I'm going to put a 1. So we get a 1 squared plus b lots of 1 minus 4 is equal to minus 3. And if we simplify this down, we get a plus b minus 4 is equal to minus 3. And I'm just going to simplify this slightly. You'll see why a bit later on. I'm going to add 4 on both sides, just so I can put all the numbers on one side of the equation. If I do this, this cancels. We get a plus b is equal to, well, minus 3 plus 4 is equal to 1. So that's going to be my first equation. You can probably see where I'm heading with this. But let's just keep that equation there and let's do exactly the same process here. So with the second term, n is equal to 2. So I'm going to do the same thing. Wherever I see an n, I'm going to put a 2 and make it equal to 2. So if we do this, a 2 squared, b lots of 2 minus 4 is equal to 2. And let's just simplify this slightly. So 2 squared is 4, so we get 4a. 2 times b is just 2b minus 4 is equal to 2. I'm going to do the same procedure I did in the previous question. I'm going to add 4 on both sides like so. This cancels, so we get left with 4a plus 2b, and then 2 plus 4 is equal to 6, which is my second equation. And what I've essentially done here is I've actually made a set of simultaneous equations. So if I write this up here, so I'm going to write 4a plus 2b is equal to 6, a plus b is equal to 1. And now essentially I'm going to use that uh, simultaneous equation method that you should be familiar with. I want to get either the a's or the b's the same. I'm going to make the b's the same here, so I'm going to times the bottom equation by 2. I'm going to copy out the top equation here. If I times everything here by 2, a times 2 is 2a b times 2 is 2b, and 1 times 2 is 2. And the reason I've done this, I can use that elimination method. The 2b's are the same, so I'm going to take the equations from each other. If you're not sure why I'm doing that, just hold fire for the moment. So 4a minus 2a is 2a. 
2b minus 2b is 0. It disappears. It's exactly what I wanted. And then 6 minus 2 is equal to 4. And if 2a is equal to 4, a is equal to 2. 2 times what gives you 4? Well, that a must be 2. We're not quite finished at this point, so don't start celebrating. Oh, yeah, because you still need to work out what b is. So if we label these equations 1 and 2, for example, I'm going to substitute a in 2, in equation 2. So wherever I see an a, I'm going to put a 2. So I get 2 plus b is equal to 1, and therefore b must be equal to minus 1. Those are my two answers for five marks. Nice five marker, good to get those marks secure in the exam. So this is what they're doing with sequences. They're doing a slight twist on this kind of question where they're combining your standard nth term knowledge, but also with simultaneous equations as well. Again, you can see the mark scheme there and have a look at that very carefully. If you need a catch up on all things IGCSE 0580 maths, then check out the video in front of you because I spend two hours going through the really critical topics that will make up the vast majority of your exam.